Welcome back. We are going into a series about sterilizing instruments. And so if you haven't caught our first uh, why on this video, uh, it's up here, go click on that video. Um, it'll tell you all about disinfection, sterilization, and all the differences. But this video is all about how, how do you do this? How are some tricks out there? Can you use your Instapot? These are all questions I'm gonna answer and more. So stay tuned for this video. Okay, so how are you gonna sterilize your instruments when you are working in the community? And community-based midwives have one of the biggest challenges because they have to be on the ready at every moment, and yet they are not near standard equipment. Um, so in a hospital setting or in a clinic setting, you deliver care in one room and then you carry things out of that room and right into the sterilization room or the lab or the all the different places where there are services built into facilities. And if you run a birth center, you should build in these facilities. Your lab, your laundry, your sterilization location, these should all be within arm's reach so that you don't have to go far to make all of your instruments ready to use again. But when you work in the community and you are driving to home births and you are all over the region where you serve, you need to come up with some very clear systems and methods to take care of your instruments so that they last a long time. The first method would be dry heat sterilization. So in this method, like all methods, you're gonna clean your instruments, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is get any biological matter off of them, clean them with an enzymatic soap, dry them thoroughly, and then store them in your bag until you get to your office or your home or wherever you're gonna sterilize. So dry heat is basically the easiest and the most available. And this is using thermal conduction for sterilization. And honestly, you can use your home oven. So in this technique, heat is absorbed and passed through the layers of cloth or sterilization bag. First, it's incorporated into the outer layer and then it transfers into the next layer. And when the temperature reaches its maximum, the particular item on the inside becomes sterilized. Dry heat destroys proteins and proteins are essential component of all microorganisms cell wall and hence their death occurs after the removal of those proteins. So it's very effective. Um, it usually takes like longer to dry heat sterilize than it does to steam sterilize. Um, and that's essentially the only reason why mainstream medicine doesn't use dry heat is it takes longer. It's not as efficient because moisture penetrates faster, but it's just as effective. So dry heat is a perfectly appropriate technique. You're gonna preheat an oven with an internal thermometer. So don't just trust the oven temp. You gotta buy one of those internal oven temps so that you make sure you hit the correct temperatures. And you, you basically have two options. You can sterilize at 320 for two hours, 320 Fahrenheit, or 340 for one hour. The, the choice here is yours. I know some benefits and risks for both. I mean, there's no real risk, but uh, for the one hour, you have to be absolutely certain of that temperature, number one. But if you're using the plastic sterilization, sterilization bag, sometimes the temperature gets so hot they melt a little bit. Uh, people who are using paper, it makes the paper burn smell bigger. So most midwives I know opt for lower temp for longer time. Uh, but whatever you wanna do there, 320 for two or 340 for one, clean, dry, and package your instruments. However you're packing them, some people pack them in that non-barrier blue uh, wrap and then tape it with sterilization tape. Some people buy those steam sterilization bags and then put sterilization tape to make sure that they sterilize. Some people are sterilizing in reusable metal containers. Um, there's a lot of options here. The point is that the instruments have to be within a package that can't be touched when you move it and won't open unless you want it to, right? So place those inside um, their packaging, put them on a dry cookie sheet, um, and then set the timer to the appropriate temp, and there you go. The different disadvantages that you need high temperatures, so there's certain things you can't sterilize in, like plastic. You should never sterilize rubber either. It takes a long time, and then there's cool down required. Uh, but, you know, very straightforward. It does require a source of electricity. So if you're living in a low resource environment, this isn't a good option, uh, but it's very, very appropriate. The next procedure would be steam sterilization via an autoclave. And there really is no effective way to do steam sterilization without having um, a 
piece of equipment. So in other words, you can't put a pan of water at the bottom of your oven and call it steam sterilization. So you could purchase an autoclave. Um, there are many, many different brands on the market. Midmark is probably the most common in midwifery circles. It's about a thousand dollars, I would say. Uh, steam sterilization is very effective. It's certainly in the standard of care and medical model. It is water and it has to be distilled water right but water under pressure creates steam and that steam will penetrate the packages faster again achieving that success of killing the proteins in the cell walls so thereby the spores die as well um, it is irreversible as those uh, structures of protein and enzymes break down. The, the death of those in, uh, is irreversible. So first we're going to fill the autoclave with distilled water. This is very important. There cannot be minerals in it. Otherwise you end up with mineral deposits all over your machine and it will stop working within a year. So distilled water you have to buy from the store. Follow the package instructions. Clean, dry, packaged uh, metal instruments go onto the rack on the inside. Um, you secure the door, and this is very important, learn how your door works. It has a locking mechanism because when you create that much pressure, obviously that could be dangerous if you don't set it appropriately. Set your timer and uh, make sure to properly vent the autoclave before you open that pressurized door. So follow your instructions. Some of the disadvantages of steam sterilization is there is potential moisture retention in the package. Um, and that can degrade a paper side of the package. Only stainless steel and plastic items can be used here. Again, there is a danger if you don't follow the autoclave instructions. So that is real. You can steam sterilize via a pressure cooker and these are like pressure canners or pressure cookers. They're often referred to as portable autoclaves. The pressure cooker can be used to create much the same effect using an immersion only method. Pressure cookers are ideal for sturdy instruments. So your, your suturing instruments would be fine here. They can't quite reach the same temperatures as autoclaves but they definitely prove themselves to be effective. When, when spore studies are done after the fact, they're, they're always effective. Because it's not really designed to create a vacuum, um, it's important to let the pressure build up before you vent it, but also know the, the limits of your, of your actual pressure cooker. So read those instructions very carefully. Uh, again, clean those instruments. Um, package uh, and then we place them directly. We don't package for the for the autoclave. So what most midwives end up doing is they put their instruments that they want sterilized in the base in the water bath, and then they put one quite large like a alligator clamp or tenaculum or some kind of large uh, gripper. They place that so that it's actually too big to fit in the in the water bath. So the tips are being sterilized and the handle part is out. And so then they close the lid, turn on the burner, process at least 15 PSI for at least 15 minutes. This means that temp will get to 125 uh, within the cooker. Then let the whole thing cool down, vent the top. And then when you open it, um, you're gonna be able to take those, those tongs that you clean there and you're gonna be able to lift out the ones from the inside and place them in a disinfected pan. And so here's the disadvantages of steam sterilization without an autoclave to me, is you can't really package them. There's no rack, there's no place for them to get steam sterilized without being in the water, essentially. So that sterilized instrument then goes into a disinfected pan and that's good for about, um, you know, a, a week or so. If it opens, if there's any air passing over it, then it's, it's literally only good for 24 hours. So it's not a very, prolonged process. It requires frequently requires you to do it over and over. It can be messy, it can be time consuming. Obviously there's danger if you don't follow instructions of your pressure canner. And again, only stainless steel can be processed in this way. Chemical sterilization we already talked about. It's messy, it's hard to carry around. Things need to soak for at least 24 hours and you know, not much to go through there. Gas sterilization is really not even <laughs> worth talking about unless you have the access to some some big hospital uh, company that you can pay them to use their gas. It's incredibly effective for doing mass quantities of things, but obviously not, not appropriate for community-based birth. Here's a quick note on boiling instruments, and this is important. Boiling instruments at 100 degrees Celsius for at least one minute 
kills 99% of, of microorganisms, except for those few bacterial spores. So boiling does not actually sterilize, boiling disinfects. And it's, it's a great disinfectant method, and it's totally appropriate for all your cord cutting and cord clamping instruments, but it's not recommended for episiotomy or for suturing instruments. Um, some other sterilization technique needs to take place. Pathogenic organisms begin to die off between 60 and 70 Celsius, degrees Celsius, but to fully disinfect, water needs to be at a full roll, rolling boil for at least two minutes at sea level, three minutes above 6,000 feet to achieve that full disinfection. And the instruments have to be submerged the entire time. Some people say, can I use my Instapot? And I would say, yes, yes, you can, provided that you're, you know that your Instapot will reach that 125 degrees Fahrenheit um, when you have it you know, closed and not venting. So those are my ideas for methods. I hope this was helpful. Um, we really love supporting midwives. We love seeing them be successful, especially all the minutia and the details of the crossing the I's, dotting the T's and all the bits and bobs of running a practice and running a business. And so if you want to go deeper, if you want to know more, we have a bunch of courses on this on our website, midwiferywisdom.com. We've got live workshops happening all around the country. This year, we're going to be in Washington, D.C., Phoenix, Arizona, Denver, Colorado. Come see us. Check us out. Instagram, Facebook, all the places, Midwifery Wisdom and MidwiferyWisdom.com. Thanks for being here. We'll see you in the next video.